Hello everyone, welcome to this session on sequential circuit analysis in which we are going to learn how to analyze synchronous sequential circuits. So at the end of this session, you will be able to analyze synchronous sequential circuits and examine the function of the given circuit. So analysis of a clocked sequential circuit describes how a given circuit will do under certain operating conditions, how they behave under certain operating conditions. The behavior of clocked sequential circuit is determined from the inputs and the outputs and also from the state of the flip-flops. We already learn in the state machines that output and next states are both a function of inputs external inputs and the present state. So this is a state machine concept which is applicable to analyze the clocked sequential circuits. So analysis basically consists of obtaining a table or a diagram from the time sequence of the inputs, outputs and internal states. A logic diagram is recognized as a clocked sequential circuit if it includes flip-flops with clock inputs. These are the steps we are going to follow to analyze the given sequential circuits. So first step is to understand the flip-flop input. We will write their expressions. From these expressions, we will derive the state equations for each of the outputs, flip-flop outputs. Then we will derive the state table and then finally we can draw the state diagram for the given circuit diagram from which we can understand the function of the given circuit diagram. So let us understand this with the help of this example. Let us derive the state table and state diagram for the sequential circuit shown below. At the end, we will try to discuss the function of the circuit, what it performs. So if you look at this diagram, we have here two T flip-flops, two external OR gates. Both of the T flip-flops are using the same clock. So you can say this diagram is an example of a synchronous sequential circuit in which both of the flip-flops changes their outputs at the same time. So we will try to follow our steps. So first step is the flip-flop input expressions. So here this flip-flop we will name it as a A whereas this second flip-flop on the right hand side we will name it as a B. So TA, if you write the expression for TA, so the expression will be A plus B because this first OR gate inputs are A and B. A represents the state, present state of A flip-flop whereas B represents the present state of B flip-flops, that is second flip-flop here. So here the expression for the first flip-flop is TA is equal to A plus B. Similarly, input to the B flip-flop that is TB is nothing but A bar plus B. Now we already know how to write the state equations for the given flip-flop means expressions for the next state equations for the given flip-flop. So here you need to write A plus and B plus expressions. So here you can take the help of the characteristic equation. So TA XOR with A whereas B plus is TB XOR with B. So these two are the characteristic equations for the T flip-flops which you can use for the state equations. Next step is to derive the state table. 
now we will understand how these flip flop expressions will help you to derive the state table so in this first input we are going to derive is a ta so if you look at this particular column ta column it is nothing but the ordering of your state a and state b present state values of state a and state b so here ta is 0 for a is equal to 0 and b is equal to 0 then for 0 1 ta is 1 for 1 0 ta is 1 and for 1 1 ta is 1 so this is a simple or expression for ta and the re respected values we have written in this column tb is what a bar plus b so here again this is the or expression but here you need to consider the complement of a input here so 1 plus 0 is 1 1 plus 1 is 1 0 plus 0 is 0 and 0 plus 1 is 1 now we have derived the flip-flop inputs for this particular state table now the next part is to derive the next state values that are that is a plus and b plus so how to do this we are going to use the state equations which we have derived previously so a plus is nothing but the xoring of ta and a so here 0 xor with 0 is 0 so here a will change from 0 to 0 second case ta is 1 a is 0 so 0 xor with 1 is 1 means present state a will change from 0 to 1 next ta is 1 a is 1 so 1 xor with 1 is 0 so a will change from 1 to 0 here and the last case where ta is 1 again so 1 xor with 1 is 0 so present state a will change from 1 to 0 so this completes our a plus column for the next state similarly we will derive the b plus column similarly so here tb is 1 1 xor with 0 is 1 tb is here 1 1 xor with 1 is 0 tb is 0 here so 0 xor with 0 b plus is 0 tb is 1 1 xor with 1 is 0 so this completes your next state column now we have a state table with us from which we can derive the state diagram easily so for that purpose you need to concentrate on present state column and the next state column so if you observe this present state is 0 0 next state is 0 1 present state is 0 1 next state is 1 0 similarly present state is 1 0 the next state will be 0 0 and at the last when present state is 1 1 next state will be 0 0 now if you draw the state diagram for this particular explanation the state diagram will look like this you have three states here okay a fourth state is forced to this 0 0 so here 0 0 is the initial state then your machine or circuit switches to state 0 1 then from 0 1 it switches to state 1 0 and from 1 0 it again switches back to initial state that is 0 0 here if your counter is in the state 1 1 if it enters in the state 1 1 it will be forced to 0 0 state so you can consider this 1 1 state as an invalid state as a design point of view so here basically this circuit only has three states 0 0 0 1 1 0 so from this you can actually understand the application of this particular circuit so this circuit you can consider as an up counter with repeated sequence of 0 0 
जीरो वन वन जीरो सो दिस इज द फंक्शन और द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ द गिवन सर्किट डायग्राम एंड वी हैव अंडरस्टूड दिस विद द फ्यू स्टेप्स दीज आर द फ्यू रेफरेंसेस विच यू कैन रीड फॉर द फर्दर अंडरस्टैंडिंग थैंक यू